After working as a software engineer for five years, I finally found my perfect tech stack. I used it to build seven AI apps in seven weeks. That's one app released every week, ranging from chatbots to resume reviewers to art generators. Each app was deployed online, got real users, costed me zero dollars to run, and I did it while having a full-time job and a YouTube channel to run. Let's start with the front end. I used Next.js as my weapon of choice. It's a React framework that provides me with a couple of nice features like a router, and I also like their API routes, which provides me with a backend without needing to have a separate application running. Since I use Next.js, I also use React since it comes inside of it, right? Next.js is a React framework. I don't do anything too fancy though of React. I just use use effect and use state. I could optimize my code more, but for me, this is enough uh, for like 90% of what I need. For the CSS, I use Tailwind. And the only reason honestly that I use Tailwind is because ChatGPT writes good code with it. Like imagine if I need to create a dashboard in a minimalistic style, dark theme with buttons that have this rounded corner, I can just describe all of this to ChatGPT and it's gonna generate all the code and I can easily copy paste it without wasting any time. <laughs> That's literally the only reason. I can also provide a picture of like a UI that I like and I and I say, oh, can you build something similar to this but for my application? And it writes all the Tailwind classes correctly. I just copy paste, add it to my application and then it's very easy. I do use UI libraries sometimes, like I've used ShadeCN in the past and a few others, but honestly, I'm not too attached to them. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't use them. It's up to you to decide if you need it or not. Next, for the backend, I mentioned that I'm using the Next.js API routes. So that's what I do. I use edge functions for this. So for example, in my case, I'm building AI applications, right? So you're gonna have one API route for your AI. If it's like open AI, if you need some, to do some text processing or image generation, if you use Dolly. Uh, so my client side Next.js is gonna call this internal API route. That API route is gonna process the request, maybe add some extra prompts to it, add the system prompt, and then it's gonna send all of this to open AI, to like this external API model. Uh, and also this allows me to protect the API key because I pass it on the server side on those API routes. So that's super convenient. Next.js provides you the ability to have a front end and a back end through those API routes. It's really nice. For authentication though, I don't like to build the backend myself. So what I do is that I use Clerk. Clerk is like an authentication provider that makes it super easy to add user signups and sign in to your application. Super easy. I think the first time I used it, I spent just a few hours setting that up. And from there, I always use it now for all the projects that I do. Just copy paste that code that I set up once, but it's very easy. Probably in like um, 20, 30 lines of code, something like that, you're able to set that up. That's very convenient. And then also the nice thing with Clerk is that it gives you all the general authentication providers like Google, like LinkedIn, like whatever it is that you want. People can also log in using those those accounts that they have. The other thing that you have to consider for your backend is especially if you're building AI applications and especially if you like me, you're making them available for free or you don't charge based on the number of requests that users are making. For you, the more requests people do, the more it's gonna cost you, right? So you have to think about that. And uh, especially I was giving my apps away for free so you could sign up and use real AI apps for free. And if people are gonna use them to like burn all my credits, I don't really want that, right? I'm not making anything from them. Like I just wanted to share it to the maximum amount of people. So I implemented rate limiting using Upstash. Upstash provides you with a Redis database that is gonna track all the requests that you're making to your API. And you can limit specific APIs to a specific number of requests on a time frame that you want. So for example, on some of my applications, I limited the number of requests to three per day. I made like an art generator, for example. Every day they could generate three images and that's it. And then they have to wait till the next day. And Upstash makes it very convenient, also free to use. The only drawback of Upstash is that they only provide you one database for free. So you can essentially only have one app that uh, that is running for free per account. But then if you really want to stay for free, just create the multiple accounts and you can keep using it like that. For hosting, it's very easy. I just use Vercel for all my applications. And the nice thing is that it integrates with GitHub super easily. So I just go on my Vercel dashboard. I click on one button to import the GitHub project. After two minutes, your app is fully deployed. And then that's it. You can share it with your friends. You can share it with your parents, share it with online strangers. Um, to get some users. So it's very easy. I have 10 apps right now that are running on my free Vercel account. I'm still on the free hobby tier and so far, all good, right? You only run into limitations when either you want to build something that is an app that is computationally intensive. So you're going to run into limitations on the API side, or if you start to get too many users, but then that's a nice problem to have. You can charge them and essentially make money. It's not gonna cost you a lot even if you have like a paid tier on, on Vercel. For analytics, the nice thing of using Vercel is that Vercel also provides you with an analytics dashboard that just comes out of the box. The only thing you need to do is you need to install a Vercel analytics package in your app, but also it takes like two seconds to add, it's like two lines of code. And then you need to enable analytics on the Vercel dashboard. And then that's gonna give you 
the page views, like the number of visitors coming in, where they're from, like which countries are they from, which devices they're using to access your app. So it's very basic, like analytics, nothing too advanced. I use this for my projects because right now I just didn't spend too much time on analytics, to be honest. If you want to do something more advanced and something that I'm going to start uh, doing later is uh, Google Analytics. That can be one way. Otherwise, you can set up something like uh, a mix panel or heap to track your analytics. Next is the special sauce, like the extra spice that I like to consider in, in the stack is the API that you're using. So if you're building AI applications, you need to use AI APIs. The thing that I like to do though is because since those APIs cost money and if I want to make my apps available either for free or as cheap as possible, I found that there is a workaround. A lot of companies these days companies like Nvidia, Cloudflare, like big companies who have a lot of capital, they make AI models or AI APIs available for free on a very generous free tier. For example, if you use Nvidia NIM API, it provides you with a bunch of open source models like Mistral, like Llama 3. Those models, for most people, they're just as good as GPT-4. Like for a lot of applications, most people are not going to even tell the difference between the two of them because they're pretty good. Like those open source models are, are they're decent. And uh, if you get them for free versus paying a bunch of money to open it, obviously it's nice if you can just use something for free. So NVIDIA NIM API has a very generous free tier. Cloudflare AI API has an even better free tier. And then Together AI also has a nice one. So you could essentially alternate between the three. Like whenever one of them, you, you reach the, the max amount of credits that you can use, you just move to the next one and you can keep updating your app like this so that's a nice thing if you really want to go with paid though like let's say you really care about performance maybe you want to use gpt4 you want to use dolly 3 you can use the open AI api that's fine as well uh, or you can use replicate also that's another nice one that has like a huge library of apis that you can use but that's essentially all the ones that i've, I've personally tried this is the tech stack that have allowed me to build seven unique AI apps in seven weeks this stack is designed to help you prototype apps in the shortest amount of time possible if you want to build real SaaS applications though like production level where you can charge people more Money. Obviously, you also need a database to track all the user data and then a payment provider. I recommend just using Stripe. That's the simplest and best one to use. Codebenders, thanks for watching. And always remember, code is just a tool and a tech stack is just a series of tools to help you solve some problem, provide the maximum amount of value to your users. And based on the value that you provide, that's what they're going to be ready to pay you for. Customers or users don't care about which tech stack you use, which code did you write. They only care about the quality of the app and how much does it solve their problem. Always think about this. Now, if you want to get the skills to build any app that you have in mind, I've created this special video for you. Check it out.